So music evolved um, kind of extraordinarily in the 20th century. Prior to that, sort of the holy grail of music was to, um, well, prior to that, you couldn't hear it unless it was being played. And so the emphasis on it was all about playing. Um, and not as much about listening. You know, you had audiences and, you know, they built beautiful halls in which to hear things and, and all like that. But, um, but until there was recording, there was no, <laughs> there was, you couldn't be as passive to it. And so early in the 20th century, um, recording began to develop and And our pursuit of sound became very fixated on making things sound good on recordings so that instrument builders and recording engineers really sought this kind of purity of sound and, um, and presence of things. You know, anybody who's listened to old recordings of of orchestras or um, they were just really muddy or, or bebop records you know I mean I listened to a lot of Charlie Parker coming up and right, you could never hear what the bass player was doing you just, like the drum sounded kind of like this mess in the back you know with sort of the uh, all the shots would kick out and stuff like that but the cymbals would often just sound like this like kind of wash of noise, you know. Um, and so it wasn't really until the 1950s sound began to change. Recording technology started getting good. Um, <laughs> and the instruments themselves really changed then. Uh, a huge revolution in music happened at the end of the 50s, which was the... Uh, Remo Belli developed a modern drum set with the, you know, the mylar or whatever they are, plastic heads. And so all of a sudden drums were really, they stopped being thumpy and subject to weather and, you know, they became crisper. And, and at the same time, uh, Leo Fender developed the, the electric bass you know, that was in the 50s, and the electric guitar had gone on before that, so you had this ability to have great presence in sound, you know, and as recording developed too, that, that came along, but music cleaned itself up then. And it was for the sake of consumption that that happened. And that continued to evolve through till... Uh, Oh, the next big thing that, that happened in the 60s was Buchla and, and Moog invented the synthesizer. And so for the first time, you got truly pure tones. You got real, like, sine waves and, you know, precise triangle waves and precise square waves. And <coughs> those had never been attainable acoustically. You know, the closest you get to a sine wave is a flute. Um, reed instruments have a square wavy quality, um, but you know, um, if you look at pictures of them, they're not at all square. They're, you know, all full of, of all this kind of stuff. So it's totally understandable why people pursued those things as desiderata, you know. Um, however, you know, it is. For me, uh, a lot was lost in that transition too, as you know, music became cleaner and cleaner. We got disco and techno and um, fat sounding <laughs> rock and roll and um, all kinds of stuff and it kind of brought about a kind of sterility.
And I think now we can kind of stop having that mindset of trying to clean everything up, you know, sort of from the, oh, I don't know, the 30s through the 80s or 90s was all about cleaning it up and cleaning it up and getting the most present and specific sound with, you know, as little unwanted sound in it. Um, yeah, getting it very pure and very clean. And, and I completely understand the desire for that, having, you know, grown up recording on cassettes and stuff like that. It's really frustrating, all this hiss and noise, and you can barely hear what's going on. And, you know, cheap recording prior to, you know, <laughs> prior to, you know, first time I ever got to record without noise was in the 90s when, you know, ADATs became kind of not cheap but affordable, you know. And so all that we, you know, and this includes instrument makers and uh, recording engineers, all this stuff we were looking for, well, then we had it all of a sudden. You know, there it is. You can, you can get this very clean product and, you know, um, it's extremely present. It's kind of right in your head now. You're... But um, with that, for me anyway, my desire be shifted away from, you know, um, and I don't know how true this is for other people, but I stopped liking that. You know, um, oh, another thing is in the 80s, the drum machine came along. And so that this desirability of finding, you know, once upon a time when we wanted to find a drummer who could just keep perfect time and be so precise, you know, and it's pushing this human thing against this physicality, which it will never attain. It can just get closer and closer to it. It's kind of like, you know, the four minute mile and then the three minute and 50 second mile, you know, it's like you just push and push against these limits. But once the drum machine came along, that was unnecessary. You know, um, people started playing to click tracks, you know, and uh, um, stop making sense. You know, he always has the little earpiece in and that's his, that's his click that he plays to. And so it has this very, you know, oh man, it's just always right there, you know. Uh, so that was a very desirable thing. However, once you have a generation or so of listening to that, you know, and this is talking about me, you know, of these pristine sounds and these very present recordings and these perfect beats, um, it's kind of boring to get to paradise, you know? There, <laughs> it, it sounds so dry and so sterile to, to me that it's not that like we shouldn't have looked for this and shouldn't have aspired to this, but that once we get there, it affords us to be able to think about those things that used to be undesirable, the graininess in sounds and the, you know, the sort of muckiness in, in music. Um, those don't have to be liabilities anymore. We can hear all, you know, we can hear very deeply into things now and we don't have to avoid those things. We can think much more about, you know, instead of trying to clean everything up all the time, we can think about getting the f wholeness of this sound, you know, the, um, we can get all the presence we need so that we, you know, don't as much need to have the pure sine wave and the drone that never varies and the beat that never slips around, like, um, you know, those are all easily attainable now.
I mean, all too easily attainable now. You hear them all the time. Like, you know, I hear them and I'm bored with them, to, to be honest with you. Like, I hear, you know, synthetic movie soundtracks and stuff like that that just, they just sound lifeless to me. You know, because the, the pitches are always exact and the beats are always exact and the drones are always totally stable. And so there's no kind of micro life going on inside of there. And so with, with you know, technology reach this place and <laughs> It opens another door kind of back into the noise that we were trying to get away from, I think. You know, um, the one thing that people will say about old blues records is they're just so, um, I guess, people who call them authentic. You know, uh, Robert Johnson or, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, in old jazz, like it's just so, yeah, it just sounds committed to itself. and. <laughs> Part of that is that, you know, that was recorded really simply, it was used in, like mono, you know, they just play around a microphone. And then when they started separating everything, it kind of took some of that out of it. And I believe, like, going forward, we're going to want to see what of that we can recover. You know, it's, it's completely understandable why we wanted to eliminate it and get away from it. But once we achieve that, um, it's not as cool as we thought it would be. It's like, you know, leastwise to me, it's I want to hear more humanness and I want to hear more um, real worldliness. I don't exactly know what you call it. Um, it's sort of physical authenticity in sound. You know, it's... Um, I don't that much want to hear... I'm more conscious in a lot of present day music. I'm more conscious of how much processing is going on with the sound. That's, and those people are great artists, like, um, you know, it's amazing what they can do with things now. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing what they can do with things now to get it fatter and more kind of present is the word I keep coming to with this. Like, you can hear every part because there's no, like, little bit of fuzz in, in this bass part anymore that collides with this tom-tom part. Everything is very isolated and um, to me that, that makes me kind of uncomfortable. You know, I mean, it, it's a good metaphor for uh, a lot of people are complaining about millennial society is people are kind of disconnected from each other and they live in their little bubbles of, you know, of their lives and you know, they have Facebook, but they don't actually hang out and talk to people as much, or whatever. I don't even know if any of that's true, you know, I, I don't do very much of that, so, you know, it's just something people whine about. But I do feel that in the music. I do feel that the music's too separated and the parts are too isolated and the sounds themselves don't um, bleed into one another, you know, they call it bleeding. Um, <laughs> I don't think of it that way. I think of it as, as they interact and, you know, they're part of a whole together. I, I think that's all good. I like that. I like, you know, when, you know, to me, a lot of what music's about is how does this interfere with that? Uh, you know, in a philosophical sense, those who are familiar with uh, Gilles Deleuze, you know, how... Um, Things happen in things instead of, you know, instead of this happening over here and this happening over here and them kind of going along on their independent way, they kind of 
interact and become parts of the other and uh, rather than um, eminence is what he called it. Uh, well worth checking out if, if you're interested in smart French guys and what they think about. Anyhow, as a metaphor for society, we like the music sounds like maybe we live these days isolated and separate and, and all that, you know, rather than interactive and as messy. And it sounds to me like going in one of those very sterile, um, oh, going to an American psycho apartment, you know, that, <laughs> I love that movie, um, where everything is so controlled and so clean, you know, instead of, uh, Instead of looking like life, you know, um, I've lived fairly marginally most of my life. Um, I'm not a great housekeeper. Um, there's always all this clutter and chaos around and there's dust, you know. Um, I'm very comfortable in that environment. And I like music that has dust and clutter in it as well. I just kind of think going forward that that's, I won't say that's the most interesting part, but that's the part that provides it lots of interest. You know, as, um, yeah, there's the thing is, it's, um, just because that this process that the late 20th century went through um, led to this kind of sterility, it doesn't mean that that was unuseful or bad work. I am thrilled we have digital technology and that we can really hear things now and really manipulate sound easily, you know, without having to be extraordinarily wealthy. Cool thing, you know, and Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's sort of the same way when, when uh, there's another kind of analog, and this is a hundred years ago, people started thinking about getting more noise into the music because they'd achieved this, uh, I don't know, very, very powerful way. This is, I'm talking about Euro music very powerful way of using the orchestra and stuff like that. So they started wanting more complex chords in it. You know, after Wagner and Debussy and you know, Stravinsky came along and sort of injected more, to me, a lot of life into music that had gotten very sterile um, by just making it noisier. You know, it was very precise in his noise and you know, that's why I love him so much. Um, being noisy doesn't have to mean being just shoddy and crappy and like that. It's, it's, you know, you can really think about it if you want to. And, um, you know, there, there's a huge vocabulary in there. Um, yeah, Luigi Russolo with the art of noises, some people will will know about that, just made these machines to make noise because he thought living amongst machines and engines and industry, this was becoming part of our sound power. And I believe that's true. I've very rarely in my life, you know, in the wilds of Montana or the vastness of the desert or wherever, I've kind of heard silence, but that's for a few hours out of you know, <laughs> decades of life, you know, it's, it's just really rare. So anyhow, that's the long and the short of it is, is I think that we've had this path going, you know, in a particular direction toward the cleanness of sound and toward the ability to isolate sound and the ability to control sound. And I feel like maybe our way going ahead is to start turning away from that and start 
really investigating the mud and the dirt and the dust in it. You know, we have this opportunity now, which before you really couldn't do that in the 1950s. You know, um, yeah, it was hard to make a piano sound good. You know, uh, it's still kind of hard to make a piano sound good. Like, like if I record this, like it doesn't sound like it does in this room. You know, so there's still people working on that and awesome, you know, and they just get better and better and better. They do amazing, amazing work. <laughs> and we were just our, our aesthetic bias, like going toward this cleanness and this antiseptic idea. I don't think we need to do that anymore. There's another interesting, I read this a little while ago that, um, Poorer people tend to be a little bit healthier than richer people because their houses aren't as clean. Um, yeah, I can't remember exactly where this was from and the exact science around it, but that if we live in a richness of microbes, we tend to have stronger immune systems and, and like that than if we live where it's, you know, a sterile environment like makes you sick in a way. Um, I just think that's been true f with music. It, it sounds, you know, yeah, it gets this sort of lifeless sound to me.